So, hello YouTube, and welcome back to another episode of Hollow Knight, where I am doing commentary for this video. Now, off the top of my head, this is me going to face the Soul Tyrant. Uh, other than that, I actually don't remember much else of what goes on in this video, because it's been a while now, and my memory is terrible. So... What's going to be happening is I'm going to be commentating on what I do as well as basically spitballing because there's not really a lot else I can do, unfortunately. So I'm literally doing this so this audio to these videos and unfortunately I'm very limited in what I have at the moment because I'm not made of money, to put it very bluntly. But yeah, so going through the Soul Sanctum, uh, literally trying to get through that uh, hole in the ceiling because it's a quick way to get up. Trying to find my way to uh, the, the body of the Soul Master so I can fight the Soul Tyrant. Uh, the Soul Tyrant being a even stronger version of the Soul Master. He's horrible to fight. I think it, think it took me a couple of tries, if I remember correctly. I'm not too sure. But yeah, here we are. I'm beating up some of the mobs, getting as much Geo as I can, going forward with it, getting Soul, beating up some more mobs, and you will notice going through this that I will just make very, very silly mistakes. And it's always the case. And here we go. Soul Tyrant. And I've got some platforming to do before you even get to him. And now it will start. And there he is. He appears just like that. He's also faster. He is so much faster than his um, Soul Master counterpart. He's, it is ridiculous. And as, as, as you can see, I'm just getting hit by everything. He also likes to teleport a lot. He likes hitting you from afar. He likes hitting you from close. He is it? Pretty tricky boss. Not even going to deny it. Very tricky boss. The first, the first time going through a boss is always the hardest because if you've never seen them before, it's always a challenge. Here we go. I'm trying to get closer and he's teleporting away. And then I, I try and heal in any any breathing space he gives me which isn't a lot and then you will see later on with later bosses like i get even less breathing room yeah so with this attempt, uh, I, I do notice that I do get hit by his... I'm going to call them soul orbs, because I don't exactly know what the attack is called that he uses. But when he surrounds himself with them, I do get hit by that quite a bit. And there we go, I've, I've just had my first death. Um, I do get hit by them quite a bit. And it, I think it takes me a couple of, couple of attempts before I even recognise... Oh... Okay, um, I can avoid this somehow. It's, like, it's, one, it's one of the things when it comes to gaming is it, if I'm struggling on a boss, it usually takes me a few tries and then I sort of like click. Uh, there are a few exceptions to that rule, 
where I will just be like, nope, this is actually way too difficult for me and I'll move on to something else. Now, here, I'm just carrying on as usual, fighting the boss, hitting it, whatever. So I'm just going to talk about something different just to fill in the gap. So when I played Sekiro Shadows Die twice, for an example, talking about ridiculous bosses, I got to... What's his name? I think his name is Genshiro. I believe. I believe his name is Genshiro. I got to Genshiro and then decided, no, that that's enough. Um, because I spent days upon days trying to beat him and my hands just could not keep up. It could not cope. Um, I, I tried though. I, I gave I gave my damn hardest try of trying to get beat that guy and it just wasn't happening so unfortunately uh sekiro shadows dies dies die twice is a um is a game that i will never beat it is one of the few games that made me rage quit really really hard and I do not ever want to put myself through that headache ever again. Because it, it, it was it was difficult, it was challenging, but it got to a point where I physically couldn't keep up with the game. For example, um, like I said, I, my hands cramp very, very easily. I have RSI, I have what I would assumed to be arthritis, uh, but not to the point where my hands are deformed, but to the point where they're just really slow, they're really grindy. You will, every now and then, if, with there being no audio here, I can do this. All right, that's my fingers. And that doesn't hurt them or do anything. I actually, that actually eases up quite a bit of the pain. But... I do know for a fact that um, my ha my um, nerves, uh, I've, I've had bad nerves for a long time. The nerves from my back that connect along my arms and my hands, they are very lagging. They, I, I basically lag as a human being is the best way to put it. Um, I'm a lot slower with my um, coordination. I mean, I'm I can coordinate, as you can see with me fighting in Hollow Knight. Like I can be quick sometimes, but it's not a guarantee. Uh, it's it takes a lot of muscle memory and practice. Uh, say for like me learning how to avoid his, the Soul Tyrant's attacks in the video now. It 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 takes time. But, yeah, with Sekiro Shadows dies, dies twice, yeah, I had to sell that game. I, I got to a point where I physically could not keep up with the game. Which is really sad, because I wanted to like it. I really, really wanted to like it. And um, unfortunately, it's just wasn't meant to be, which is a shame. But, yeah, when I play Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, and Elden Ring, and Bloodborne... I'm fine. I'm right at home. It's weird how it works like that sometimes. It really is. But it's one of those things. You know, it happens. But yeah, it's, it's all fair. Oh yeah, pause the game here because I needed to have a breather. I needed to... Uh, quote unquote pump myself up because I was having I, I was having a tough time with Soul Tyrant. I, I won't deny it. I was having a tough time with him. I was finding him really, really difficult. Didn't know exactly what to do. And it was getting to a point where I, I was getting a little upset. I was getting a bit exasperated. It's you know, the the game was the game's hard. Yeah, and here's me 
trying to avoid his attacks and failing miserably, as per. Because I do. I, I am I am not good at avoiding attacks. I'm not quick enough for it. I struggle. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I really do struggle. Okay. All right. Let's have a look. Yeah. I know for a fact that I'm going to die again soon. So I'll start talking about something else. So, with Hollow Knight, I do enjoy seeing the architecture. Because it's fascinating that they decide, like, decided, like, these bugs are sentient. And we they made all this gothic architecture. So... The Hollow Knight headcanon for me is all all the bugs are goths. All of them. They're all gothic. And you know what? I'm all here for it. Because that's actually quite a funny way of putting it. It's very Kafka-esque as well. Uh, and that that's literature I haven't read in a while. Bloody Metamorphosis by Kafka. That's a, bit, that's a long one. It's been a long time since I read that. But yeah, so Hollow Knight, Gothic architecture, really, really enjoy the uh, the locales that is available to see in Hollow Knight. I think it's a rather beautiful game with beautiful music to go with it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, with how the audio of these videos went, I do not have the original audios anymore, which is why I'm re-recording. It, it's unfortunate. It is what it is. Uh, I'm actually just re-recording the audio for these videos because I feel like it's the least I can do to make up for the mistake of, oh, I uploaded this video and it's got no audio whatsoever because Stream OBS decided, hey, I, I don't have audio anymore. It, it's the least I can do. Um, unfortunately, there's only so much I can spitball about without having someone to bounce off of. I have asked uh, the other members of the Gaming Emporium if they want to join in, but guess what? I've had radio silence about that so far. So it, it will probably happen in later episodes. But I really, really think having someone to talk to other than just talking myself whilst watching myself play the game that I've already played um, would be a bit better if I had someone to bounce off of and talk about random things because um, we at the Gaming Emporium, we eventually are going to be doing a podcast just as podcast episodes and it would give us good practice on what we do with these podcasts or what we talk about how we talk about things so it would be great practice so that is definitely something that I will be looking to. Um, yeah, it would be quite good to see how it works with the other members. But we'll we'll wait and see on that. Uh, I've, like I said, I've not had much luck, uh, or the best point, I've not had any replies yet. It has been a couple of hours. They are busy with their jobs. Uh, same as I am with mine, so we only get we get back in touch when we can. It it's just how it works. It's just how it happens. But so far, um, with Hollow Knight, I have enjoyed Hollow Knight. Uh, obviously, I'm talking. I know I'm trying not to spoil any of the episodes because you're probably interested in the visuals as well as seeing what happens but with Hollow Knight I am I have been very impressed with the game I I initially did the playthrough to finish the game because I never finished the game before so that was something that my goal was like no I'm using the opportunity with this channel to actually just finish the game 
something I've always wanted to do, which is which I've done. I've I've done a ending of the game. I was happy with that. And then with this uh, 100% run that I'm going through, um, I have done, finished the game, got the final true ending, so to say, and it was it was an experience. It was so good. Like the last boss was one of the hardest final bosses I've ever fought in a video game, and even then. I, I feel like I just figured, had a little idea in my head and went with it. I was like, oh, this is how I could do it. And it worked. And I don't think I would be able to do it again. I don't think I would be able to do it again. Um, but it was a pleasant experience anyway. Uh, looking at the video now with the Soul Tyrant, I'm doing better than before. I feel think it's either I think it's either this run or the next run I get to the second phase and then I lose immediately because I forget I forgot about the second phase and I panicked which is quite funny and also got trying to remember to um, heal in the breathing breathing space because that's one of the things like one of the things that some of the older bosses in the game like the later bosses in the game so to say that I have trouble with is the breathing room given to heal is very 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 minimal it's all about can you do this on one run which I can understand it's it's definitely a tactic especially to use when you want to make you know bosses a bit more challenging but at the same time there's me with my uh, terrible hands trying to uh, play to that design and it doesn't work for me. Well, I say it doesn't work. I managed to get I managed to beat the game, but it's it was still difficult fighting against my own body. So that's not something that I want to put myself through again. I I did decide after beating Hollow Knight is like that I am not coming back to Hollow Knight for a long, long time. It'll be like a, a casual play um, sort of thing. I won't be coming back to the game. It was too much. Way too much. But at the same time, I'm still happy with what I got from the game. It was an experience. It was a pleasant journey. Because I felt like I was discovering a new world and going through it and being fascinated by every single locale and landmark. There's still probably a lot in the game that I never got to see um, or find out about. Like There was this mushroom man thing in the fungal waste which didn't really do anything and I don't know why. And it's things just kept popping up in places that you've been before that I never noticed. So there's a, there was a plenty to the game to, to still discover and do, even long after I've been to a place and cleared it out of everything it had. It was fascinating. It was like this, it was the game that just kept on giving. And I loved loved it. I loved I loved it. The, my only downside with Hollow Knight that I can think of is uh, a lot of the optional stuff is a bit too hard. Like Nightmare King Grim later down the line. Uh, yes, that that hurt my hands a lot, and it got to a point where. I, I didn't want to play anymore. And it, it was rough. It was really, really rough. And then I'm now thinking about it. I am dreading doing, doing the commentary for that video. Because uh, it, 
unfortunately, there's there's not much to talk about in that video. So I'm worried that I'm going to be talking mainly about a lot of other things. Which is great practice for the podcast, don't get me wrong. It really is. It's good practice for the podcast. But at the same time, I feel like, one, well, we want you to talk about the video. Honestly, it, it's there's really not much going on in that video other than me just spitballing and talking about stuff. Uh, it That's what it will be. Because it's just me getting wrecked quite a lot of the time and getting agitated with the game. I, I do... You know, if if the original audio was kept on the video, stayed on the video, and didn't vanish, it would probably be a good video of seeing someone who genuinely struggled with Nightmare King Grimm literally break down a little. Because that that boss was something else. I have never fought a boss that hard in my life. And it was definitely a learning experience to, to basically tell me there, there are limits to what I can do. And like I said, I'm trying not to spoil it, but it's hard to talk about the future videos without bringing Dad up. So I'll leave it at that for now. But just giving people a word of warning about that particular video. Like I will just be talking over it about random other things. Because that's the only way I'll, you you can probably get through the video. Unfortunately. But yeah. Here we go. As I mentioned, got to the second phase. Got wrecked. And this is me trying so hard to avoid getting hit by his uh, homing soul orbs. That's what I'm just going to call them, soul orbs. And it was tough. It was really, really tough because I knew I, I knew the second phase was coming. I knew there was a second phase. The original fight had a second phase. It made sense. And it got to a point where I completely forgot about it and as soon as it started I panicked I panicked so hard it must have, it must have been funny if someone was with me watching me do it play this because but I panicked so hard I yelped I screamed I was I was crying I was like I forgot about this why did I forget about the second phase it must have been if someone was here watching me they would have been on the floor, howling with laughter. I would have been the same. <laughs> I would have been the same. I, I can't deny that my brain just completely forgot about his horrendous second phase. But, you know, it's one of those things. The One of the pluses I like about um, Hollow Knight is the fact that most bosses, you can learn their patterns, you can learn what attacks they do, you can learn their animations, their tells, and work from that and be like, oh, he's doing that, I, I need to jump away. Oh, he's doing that, I need to f get into a good position on in the room or in the air. You, you, can, you can learn, it's always a learning experience. And I like that about Hollow Knight quite quite a bit. Most bosses, yeah, you might lose on your first time. You might lose on your second or third. But most, most of the time, it is easy to pick up on what enemies are doing. But then there are other enemies where they, it's just like, they are just generally quicker, faster, stronger, and a lot more challenging. Uh, Soul Tyrant was one of them. Nightmare King Grimm is one of them. I even struggled on the Hive Knight. Right? Yep, yeah, that, that is my nemesis. I can't explain it. I don't know why. But for some reason, I find the Hive Knight hard. Even though it's practically the Mantis Lord's 
Um, but with, you know, it shouldn't be that hard. But for some reason, my brain just thinks it is. But at the same time, you know, it's what it's one of them. But you know, uh, other bosses that were difficult. Failed champion, first couple of attempts, um, fighting failed champion. Yeah, he he can be hard, but he's also just a failed knight, but stronger. Faster. Not much else to it, really. Okay, here's the second phase again. And here we go. Trying to learn if I can avoid his attack on the floor. Learning that it's just safer for me to just stay in the air. There we go. I've learned to just stay in the air when he's doing that. It's safer. And then I tried to heal. I tried. It's that's what that's one of the problems with healing, right? You think you've got your opportunity to heal. You don't. Half the time you're setting yourself up to get hit. And it's it's a common mistake that I make all the time all the time I was like I need that heal I need that heal I'm so focused on getting that heal and it's, it is what it is you know you can't win them all Don't, you, you shouldn't be planning to win them all it's impossible and it's, it's just try and get through it as best as you can not much else you can do Sorry, I'm having a yawn. Ugh. It is. Right, it's not even that late, but I've been busy since 6 o'clock from this morning. It's now 7 o'clock in the evening. And I am ready for bed already, but I want to try and get through as many of these commentary videos as possible. Um, mainly because I need to get them out of the way. I need to get them done. Because, like I said, it's the least I can do. And it just doesn't feel right having the the original videos on YouTube with literally no audio whatsoever, just the videos. <sighs> I'm still so gutted that it even happened. 16 hours worth of video footage without audio that just slipped by because Stream OBS literally said the audio was fine. When it clearly wasn't. Um, oh, just to give you an idea as well. Like I'm not using Stream OBS to record this vocals. I'm not even using Filmora, which I did for the first one. Uh, episode 16. Uh, I'm actually using Sony Vegas uh, Pro 19.0. Because it came, it just came available on a, the Humble Bundle Creators Pack. And I thought, that could be what I need. That could be exactly what I need. So, let's try and work with it. See if this actually works well. Uh, so far, it seems to be recording audio perfectly fine. Um, I, can e I, can even s I can see my vocal track from the microphone from where I'm sat now, which is in a, in, on a sofa, uh, watching this laptop, which is on my... Um, coffee table which is a meter away and I can see my audio is coming up perfectly fine because I'm trying to relax whilst doing this I'm not I don't want to be too engaged with uh, the video so to say because there's not much to talk about other than oh I jumped oh I did a swing here oh I got hit no one wants to hear me commentate that that's just I will do it every now and then, be like, oh, yeah, I got a cheeky little hit in there, and I managed to slip through things. That's fine every now and then, but you do not want that the whole episode. I'd find that boring. You'd find that boring. Everybody would find that boring. 
nobody wants to hear that. Like, so the commentary is literally for the sake of saying it's commentary. I'm literally just recording my voice over these and spitballing. There is no script. Uh, I've gone scriptless on this because there's no point making an hour an hour script for basically a video I've already recorded. I'm not really um I'm not really keen on watching what I'm doing here because it's just eh. And there we go. There's my win for Soul Tyrant. Most of my to the wire wins are literally me just going f absolutely sod this. I am literally just going to attack and not stop attack, attacking. Let's go. Let's just see what happens. And half the time, it works. It genuinely works. And it shocks me because I'm there in my brain is thinking, I took a chance here and it worked. That shouldn't happen. And yet my brain just let it happen. So yeah, so this is where I finish with the Soul Tyrant. I do not remember off the top of my head what was happening next. What I will do is I'll check my files. Let's have a look. And that's the 100% run. Episode 17. What did I do? what I did so I went on a bit of a tangent journey which is fine having a tangent journey is good in Hollow Knight because it means you explore more you get to see more of the world of Hollow Nest you know it's, it's not a bad thing it's a good thing and I will let you guys try and figure out where I'm going so you know I'm just gonna spitball again I'm under the soul tyrant's body right now like that is now completely done you cannot fight the soul tyrant again unless you've got the pantheon unlocked which is a optional um side optional side content which is unlocked with the dlc the god seeker dlc uh, if you've got the Ho Hollow Knight Void Heart Edition, you've got got it all anyway, so you don't need to worry about that. And yeah, so the Pantheons are a boss rush mode. Really, really fun. Uh, I do actually unlock that and get to it later. And it's super fun. It's super challenging as well, but it's actually fun. The main part is it's fun. That's the that's the main thing. It's fun. You like you enjoy doing it. You know, that's kind of what you want from a game. I mean, that is gaming in general, though. Like you wouldn't play a game if it wasn't fun. Like I read a lot, so reading scripts and like mountains and mountains of text, I'm fine with that. I enjoy reading hell of a lot. Um, like RPG games, love them. I I love give me some good story, but at the same time, you know I am a gamer. I like my gameplay. I like my turn based combat. I like my action games. I like my puzzles. I like my platformers. I I generally just love games in general. The only games that I can't really get my head around and enjoy is, uh, sports games. Like FIFA or Madden or uh, anything to do with any sport, really. N not a big fan. I don't know why. Just not a big fan. Um, it's it, it's not even that I find it. You know, I've got some prejudice against sports, but it's just I don't find uh, those games fun at all. Yet I really enjoyed Blitzball and Final Fantasy X. But that didn't feel like a sport. That felt like me having a fight, having a battle. And it just ended up using that as a form. And it was a sport. It, it's weird. I don't. I can't explain it. I really can't explain it. 
But at the same time, um, I do enjoy racing games. I, I love Need for Speed. I liked Burnout. I liked... Oh, what was it called now? I think it was a Burnout game, but... No, I think it was Burnout. Yeah. So, I like Need for Speed. I like Burnout. I even enjoyed uh, Gran Turismo. I actually find Gran Turismo is a really fun game to play. Uh, you won't see me playing sports games on here, just to let you guys know. Not really, anyway. But I, I did, generally did find it fun. It's a super fun game. Uh, I remember back in my PlayStation 1 days, I played Colin McCree Rally. You know, found that fun as well. Uh, I do have to segue from my tangent. Well, I have visited the sea and I have upgraded the Dream Nail. And I've now got the Dream Gate. So, if you can't read that very well, I will explain the Dream Gate for you. So, the Dream Gate allows me to place down a warp point and warp to it. Which is, later in the game, super handy. I mean, like, super handy. It's... It saves so much travel. Oh, you need to get from A to B, but you, you've already been to B. Dreamgate. It's super good. And for the most part, you can get there from anywhere. I'm just having a quick nose through. There we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, so I'm back at Dirt Mouth. And before anyone says anything, no, I do not remember what I am doing. I think I'm checking how many uh, simple keys I've got. There we go. I've unlocked the cave cavern right next to Dirt Mouth. And then talk to, I think his name's Gigi. Yeah, Gigi. And that was it. But there's not really much else I could do in there. And I still, to this day, do not know what he does. I, I have no idea. I generally don't know. Which is quite funny, because there's quite a few things in this game that I just don't understand even. <laughs> uh, but that's one of the problems with power dashing as well. So, if a power dash, it's usually going to be into an enemy. I am terrible at it. terrible at doing it. It's so bad. But yeah, uh, back to Tangent. Sports games, big no. Not a fan. Racing games, I am fine with racing games. In fact, I just remembered another racing game that I really enjoyed playing as a very, very young boy. Uh, Midnight Club uh, on the PlayStation 2. I thought that game was amazing. It was pretty, really, really fun. Wasn't easy. No, it wasn't easy at all, but I found it really, really fun. And generally feel like I should have played more of it. Because um, I, I think I didn't play in that club too. I think I just played the first one. I really, really enjoyed it. Unfortunately, I don't remember much about the game though. I just remember it being like super fun. I remember there were a couple of races where they were just really, really difficult. 
Yeah, I find Myla in the cave and she attacks me. And I'm there trying to uh, dream nail her to find out what's going on, but she just won't let me. Yeah, I ended up killing her. Which is unfortunate. I wanted to find out what she what she was thinking, but it's so sad. And then I make my way to uh, get more soul. Uh, back to the Crystal Peak. Yeah, I make my way to the Crystal Peak. And this is where I start traveling down routes that I've not f actually been before. And then I pick up another rancid egg there. Right, rancid eggs. Still have no idea what their uses are. I've got tons of them in my inventory. No idea what they're used for. Got loads of them. I think I even bought one from one of the NPC characters in the Royal Waterways. And then I'm there like, okay, great. What do I do with this? The game hasn't told me. I, I generally don't know. That's one of the funny things about um, uh, Hollow Knight. Is you have to discover most of the time what you can do in the game. It's very rare that you are forced to, right, go find out. Here you go, here's the information. Done. Now you, now you know. It's like, sometimes, most of the time it doesn't work like that. Because it just doesn't. Um, but yeah. Having some fun in the Crystal Peaks. Making my way to the top. And... I think, yeah, right, so I remember exactly what I'm doing now. So I am making my way to the top. I am basically just going through Crystal Peak and going, right, where have I not been? I haven't been here. Let's go explore. So I'm just exploring Crystal Peak, getting as much geo as possible, uh, getting as much anything as possible, really. Just making my way through the game. I do have to say though, like some of the, uh, yeah, some of the indestructible enemies in this game, right? It's, I don't find it fair. It should, it shouldn't be a thing. It really, really shouldn't. But at the same time, you've got to have some enemies that are diff, like normal enemies that are difficult, so you can. When you get stronger, you can find ways to beat them. Like the laser bugs, you need to um, definitely need to uh, soul blast them with. Well, you need you need to use magic to beat them, which completely understandable. Um, but if you didn't know, you didn't know. And it's, it's, there's a lot of stuff you can do. And it's never explained to you. You have to figure it out. And that goes with enemies. It goes with puzzles. It goes with just simple mechanics in the game that are never explained. You have to find it out. You have to figure it out. The game will not tell you explicitly everything. You have to discover it. And that's something that I quite like about these games like you have to discover it and it is it's part of the, part of the learning um it's part of the uh, learning process of the game which is something that i associate quite a bit with um dark souls dark souls games it's all about learning which people wouldn't expect but it is it's all about learning the game 
learning its mechanics, learning the enemies. It's all about picking things up and learning what they do. Right? You wouldn't know you are good with a spear weapon until you start using a spear weapon. Right? Everyone's got their preference on what weapon types they like to use. Right? I know a lot of people that live by the Uchi Katana uh, in any of the Souls games and Elden Ring. Like they swear by it, and I completely understand it's a very reliable weapon. But I also know people that are like, yeah, I, f I found like just using a simple like spear and shield was actually like my winning combo. I was like, really? I was like, yeah, I got through the entire game with it. It's mad, absolutely mad how that works. But it works, and it works for quite a lot of people. And the same can be said for Hollow Knight. The only difference is you have one weapon type, the nail, and, and magic. That's it. You've got to, you to the best of your ability, with your kit, learn how to beat bosses, how to traverse certain platforming puzzles. It's fascinating how a game like this works it is fascinating and i love it it is a fun game it's a really fun little i say little it's not little it's a really fun game and now that i beat the game i am looking forward to silk song but i will not be going at it in depth like i had with hollow knight it just Mainly because I don't think my uh, my hands and my arms would be able to take it. Like Nightmare King Grim absolutely wrecked my hands, and the last boss of the game also wrecked my hands quite a bit as well. I found the last boss to be quite difficult. But in the sense of, pardon me for yawning, in the sense of, I think it was my third or fourth attempt, I can't remember off the top of my head, um, I decided I'm going to try out something and take a risk, and it paid off. So, if I played it normally, I would probably still to this day be fighting that last boss. Still. And it's just, ooh, thinking about it. Because it is quite, it, is, it was quite a challenge for a final boss. A big challenge. I wasn't expecting it to be that hard. And yet it was. No, it's, it's refreshing in a sense, though. Because it does mean that, you know... Some people are probably having going to have the same uh, difficulties I am, which is nice to know. All right here, I am still in the Crystal Peak, and I am going up a previously unaccessible area, and I'm finding the Enraged Guardian. I made him mad for basically. Um, Moving him from his chair. And then I get killed by a laser. I died to the Enraged Guardian. He isn't even a hard boss, right? He's not even a hard boss. It's just I was not expecting him to do that much damage. And yet he did. And I get hit by a laser. Notice that I can't hit him when overhead. I actually have to be super careful around him. Yeah, and I die to him again. Yeah, so I, I Enraged Guardian is one of those bosses where I picked up on what he was doing because I couldn't remember the first fight anyway. And so I had to go into the fight and be like, right, 
I don't remember what the Crystal Guardian was like. I'm going to have to learn. And this is... I do remember complaining about this quite a, quite a lot in the game. Uh, I found that, for some reason, the bosses loved to jump on me. And I mean, like, jump on top of me. And it was really, really aggravating to the point of, why? Why were they always jumping on top of me? I haven't done... I haven't even moved. I haven't done anything. I don't understand. And there's that's where I fill out a mass shot. Oop, I just dropped something. I'll have to move that in a sec. Yeah, I found another mass shard, so there we go. I've got some more health. Health is a must-have in the game. You need... I would probably recommend for the final boss having maxed out health. Because you don't... You will lose it very, very quickly. It is something I recommend. And I implore people to do. Yes, it might take... Uh, a while to do to to even get it but it's you just, you just benefit from it so much you benefit quite a bit from it I wouldn't advise doing it without it just because it helps out that much same with the soul vessels right soul vessels super handy I didn't know how handy they were until I started getting more and more of them. I was like, oh, there's, there's more. Oh, I can hold more soul. I can hold even more soul. It's just, it helps out so much. You know, it's it's such a good thing to actually have going for you when you've got more health and more basically magic to use to heal or to use as a as a damage as a form of damage it, it helps out so much it really does that's something that I will in the later videos be like right I need to actually focus on this because I need it it does. It does. It it becomes a necessity. Like, you know, the amount of damage that um, some of the enemies start pulling off later down the line is mental. Honestly, it's mental. Even the normal enemies. And I always get. I always have the problem of every now and then I will get hit by the most silliest of things. And it will just end up being a source of aggravation. Because it, it just does. As I hear now, I, I'm near the top of the Crystal Peak. And I'm trying to figure out ways to get around all the hazards and the enemies. And it's difficult when they... um technically can hit you from so far and are kind of protected from certain angles it just happens to be that you can't hit them on the back uh, same same with some of the enemies further down in the crystal peak like you can only hurt them when you're fate when they're facing you so it's just like well okay this is a challenge in itself Like one of the best charms in the game for me is Gathering Swarm. Like the I use so much geo in the game. I I use so much geo. And even at the end of the game now after I finished it, I'm there thinking like I can unlock so much stuff with this. I really can. I should really, really work on getting more geo for certain charms and things like that. Uh, that's another thing about the game as well. Like, I don't get all of the charms. I find a couple couple of the uh, the ones that eluded me the first time, but I don't get them all. 
maybe that is something I can do later down the line on for getting the max percentage. But it's it's not something that I'm actually like, yeah, I'm doing that. I'm just like, it's a maybe. It's definitely a maybe. Mainly because of how stressful the game was just at the end. And I don't want to uh, go through fighting both Nightmare King Grim and the Radiance again. Because they were just hard. They were really, really hard. And yes, I did just name drop the final boss there. I mean, I, it's not that much of a spoiler. I, I'm trying to talk minimally about it, but, you know, I, I was going to slip with the name at least. I'm not going to say what it does. All I can say is it's just a horrible boss to fight. But yeah, you know, Hollow Knight. It's really, really fun game. But, yeah, so going through the Crystal Peaks, I'm trying to make my way to the top. And there we have it. I've reached the top. I'm at the Hallowness Crown, as it's called. And there, trying to see if I can get any higher. And then, all of a sudden, I'll go, go left to see what's down there. And I find a piece of pale ore underneath a giant moth statue. And I'm there looking at it thinking, is that the king? Is that meant to be the king of Hellenest? Because I, I saw the crown and thought, huh, that's definitely something the king sort of wore. If I remember from the king's idol and whatnot. It was an interesting find because I didn't really understand it. I didn't really fully comprehend it is the best way I could put it. Which is fine, you know, it is what it is. And with that, I leave Hollowness Crown and go and find other things in the Crystal Peak. See, you know, what I can find, if anything. There's always optional stuff hidden around. Just got to find it. And there's me messing up on getting out of this little uh, alcove. And it's, it's one of the funnier things about Hollow Knight is how much I mess up on the simplest of things, of platforming, of fights. I make so many mistakes. Uh, I'm even surprised I even got to finish the game. That's how many mistakes I make. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. It, it isn't an easy game. Uh, if someone said told me Hollow Knight was easy, I'd actually laugh at them and be like, you haven't played Hollow Knight then. It's a difficult game. It's a well-made and fun game, but it's it's not an easy game. But it, it is rather fun. I mean, I I still think rather fondly of Hollow Knight to the point of looking at the game and thinking I could casually play this and really, really enjoy it. Uh, obviously, with the 100% run that I went for, that's a different that's a different ball game. I'm going for the challenge. I'm going for the harder things. It's not going to be easy getting that. And it should it should not be um it should not be um what's the word I'm after now? I shouldn't be disillusioned to think that the game's easy because I've finished it with two endings. No, no, the, the, the game is hard. The, the game is difficult. It's fun, but it's not easy. And I like that. I like that it's given me a relative challenge. I could just go for the normal ending and be fine and not go through too much of a challenge. 
I can I can play the game uh, to its most difficult settings if I really want to. The, the options are there. I mean, after finishing the game, I got to um, I got the option of like, oh, would you like to do the Steel Soul roll, Steel Soul run, where you play the game with one life and that's it. If if you die, you die. That is the end of the game. It's fascinating stuff. All right, and from here, I'll end the video. So, thank you for joining me. And I'll catch you guys next time.